So we are back on the Toka Music Podcast with a very, very special guest today. Hannes, welcome to Toka. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure, really. Thank you for taking the time to be here with us. Um, as we always do on Toka, please introduce yourself. Yeah, sure, no problem. My name is Hannes Bieger. I'm a, a music producer, sound engineer, live artist, and I'm happy to be here. Cheers, man. Uh, you're, is, it, is it your first time in Dubai? No, it's actually the third time. I'm playing the third time tonight, yes. Amazing, amazing. Uh, okay, so I'm going to bring back a very old question that we used to ask on the 14 facts. How would you, how would you describe Hannes in one word? Oh, uh, I would say music. Music? Music. Nice, nice. I like how you keep it simple. <laughs> you said one word. <laughs> <laughs> Um, your resume, your music resume, dates decades. Like you've you've been you've been in this space for so long. I know you started as a producer, and then you jumped into the mixing engineering space, and then now you started to focus more on your your personal artist career. Um, how would you? How, how was your journey? Could you tell us more about it? Um, especially transitioning from mixing to doing your own uh, artist career. How, how was it? The struggles and everything. How much time do you have? <laughs> I mean, we yeah. have an hour, but uh, yeah, no, no. Um, give I us the highlights. To, I try to keep it short and sweet. So yeah. basically, um, I started making music in the 90s, first as a guitarist in rock bands. And uh, from my perspective, the 90s were just a super inspiring musical decade because there was so much going on. Like if you if you look at uh, rock music with yeah. all this uh, grunge movement, uh, which I at the time wasn't so into, but but I could sense it was quality and it was happening. Mm -hmm. And then also um, all this uh, stuff in electronic field that, I mean, all this, basically everything... Uh, most that we do these days is based on stuff that yeah. sort of was made in the 90s, I have the feeling. And and uh, at the time, I wasn't so much into straight bass drums. It was more like like trip hop and break beats and stuff like that. And I was just fascinated with all these uh, different styles, these different bra break beats emerging from the UK every couple of months. And and it was just, just exciting. And um, I moved to... Berlin at the end of the 90s um, and then I really started to get into Deep House first and later techno and still kept doing this more listening oriented down bay, uh, downbeat uh, stuff. I released two full albums with more like jazzy broken beat sort of uh, things in the early 2000s and um, this is basically when my mixing yeah. career started to pick up because people listened to uh, my productions and then they inquired about the engineer and, nice. and asked me for a phone number. <laughs> I I always only could say, sorry, I can't give you the phone number. Why? Yeah, because you talked to a guy already. <laughs> and, and so this is, this is basically uh, how the mixing started. And um, yeah, actually between the first bigger mixing clients I had were guys like Dixon and Arm. Because wow. um, coming from... What years like were you working with them on? Or is it... 2006, 7, 8, 9-ish wow. maybe. Nice. At that time. I mean, we in Berlin, we, we, we came from a sort of uh, uh, similar scene, I would say, mm. sort of orbiting around uh, Jessanova's label, Sona Collective and and stuff like that. And um, yeah, this this is how my mixing career sort of began. And um, uh, at the time, I also needed a break from producing mm. music myself because I made two full albums in 18 months or so. And um, I just sort of exhausted my creative ideas and then um, I had the feeling, okay, I, I need to take a step back and then the mixing picked up and um, yeah, quickly it, it picked, it, picked <laughs> up even more. I mean, I was I was working with uh, so many 
great artists very quickly and um, that kept me very busy and for a long time and and actually people like Frank Wiedemann from Arm um, wow. he he was one of the people who always said Hannes you have to make music again and I was like yeah I don't know mm, I don't I don't feel like it also I'm so busy all the time and and at some point I just said um, I I if I don't do this now I will never do it and so so I finally uh, yeah went back to uh doing sort your of, own music w yeah. when was it 2017 right yeah i think i think the first release after my 10 11 year mm -hmm. break of of being an artist in my own right was probably i don't remember if it was yeah probably 2017 18 mm -hmm. i did the first um EP on Poker Flat because um, Steve is a great friend of mine and a big supporter of, of my revived artist career. So basically the first ever release after my break was on his label and my first ever uh, live show as Hannes Bieger after the break uh, was um, a party he made in Berlin. And so, um, yeah, this is this is how it started. That's nice, man. Um, this whole journey is quite big. Um, I'm pretty sure you had to go through some struggles. I would love to know more about the struggles that you went to, especially transitioning from being that engineer and then moving back into the spotlight. Um, and with these struggles, what is one advice you could give to a mixing engineer in the space and an artist in the space? Well, I think one of the biggest uh, struggles that I'm having is that a day only has 24 hours. <laughs> you know? So it's, there's so much uh, stuff to do and so many things to, to stay on top of. And that's that's a constant challenge, like uh, studio client work, my own productions, um, private life, uh, touring, uh, taking care of everything. It's, it's, it's a lot on my plate. And, and uh, I think that's the biggest challenge right now but but um if i think of your question in a bit of a broader sense i would say um i mean one of the really really big things an artist uh, has to has to figure out at some point is what is it what i want what mm -hmm. is it that i'm doing mm -hmm. and and sort of like figuring out your own handwriting in a way like i mean mm -hmm. if you if you listen to stefan botts in track you immediately know it's him you yeah. know and that that kind of uh being able to 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 identify yeah being able to 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 create a style of your own that that people recognize you for i think that's that's a that's a super big challenge also um i think consistency is very important in the sense of of um yeah just being able to to constantly maybe not uh give your 120 but 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 uh i think being a professional means that um, whatever you do it's never less than 80 percent 100 regardless of how you feel and whether you had a bad night's sleep or whatever it's 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 like when you show up you have to show up you know that's 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 something that's really really important and also especially maybe thinking of um younger up-and-coming people these days um i think what's really important is to, to to understand that um i mean there's there's the world is so big and there's so many so many things and people uh uh wanting your attention and i mean it's it's like what to focus on you know exactly that's, that's that, Too that much can clutter. be yeah. that, that, that's just such an overload of everything all the time yeah. and i think also because these days it has become so easy to basically go out and present whatever you do to the world and and as much as this is a great thing i think it's also it can be a challenge because and um, when when is it good time to, to yeah. actually go out <laughs> and when are you ready and and i think when i started out and when i was in my early 20s um the the world was a bit different in terms of that and and uh, there was more focus on the craft i would say on the music definitely yes i mean myspace was just uh 
launching sort of in the mm. early 2000s at some point but it, it was not like there was a whole ecosystem of mm -hmm. uh, competing social media giants and and no expectation to to deliver content uh, yeah. on a daily basis and stuff like that and so I think naturally there was a bit more of a focus on on uh, what you actually wanted to do and I think this this was very helpful because um, there weren't so many I mean uh, Being young in Berlin at that time, of course, there were many distractions. I mean, you could have gone out every night yeah. and, and do do this and do that. And and luckily, I've always been focused, able to focus. Yeah. Maybe maybe a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. I think in hindsight, I probably should have gone out and and present uh, what I've been doing a bit earlier. But at the same time, when I went out, um, I've had something solid to offer and I think that that can be a struggle these days because of course you don't want to you don't want to uh, yeah never show anything to anyone and then realize okay I'm in retirement age <laughs> now and where has my life been you know yeah. that, that that isn't a good idea but then at the same time um, you only have one chance to make a first impression you know yes. and and it's it's great to to use that to your advantage uh, with uh, something that that really is convincing That's and true. also so this is one thing the other thing is um uh, as much as it's helpful to focus in terms of of uh uh yeah putting in the work and then at some point uh, going out and presenting it i think uh for me it's also been helpful uh growing into what i'm doing mm -hmm. that uh, technology wasn't as advanced at the time i mean the great thing was that in the 90s um analog synthesizers were cheap yeah like i yep. bought my roland juno 64 that's a for, big problem now man <laughs> i bought my roland juno 60 for uh, what probably would be i don't know 150 euros no today or something no like way. that and stuff like that and, and i mean it was a different time but also they're collectibles um, now man it's like yes. so rare to find and right the price goes up every year it's super rare yeah. but at the same time nobody had a laptop with yeah. a ton of of uh, vsts yeah. on it and and whenever you wanted an actual synth you had to pay some actual money for it and that also meant that you couldn't pay that actual money for another synth That's and true. so so you really had to make decisions and and uh going back in time even a bit more like i think we started to to fiddle around with cassette four track recorders when i was like 14 mm -hmm. maybe and um at the time i started to get interested in electronic music also and i sort of wanted what year to, was that almost in the uh, 90s yeah i was that that was mid 90s okay. i think i think that that was probably around i don't know maybe 1993 okay. 94 at that time but this was also when when for example the first potter set album came out and and when i really started to to uh get interested in in this bristol sound and yeah. hip-hop and all this kind of stuff and and i i wanted to record a synth pad <laughs> and i didn't have a synthesizer because i was a guitarist and so the best thing i could do um I had this um, Roland uh, multi effects unit, uh, like a digital one, uh, um, half rack size, and and there was like a phaser in it, and um, the phaser obviously made a little bit of noise, you know, or there, there was a little bit of noise, and then you had this sort of mm -hmm. sound um, of the of the phaser, even if you didn't play into yeah. it. And so I, I tried to make that as loud as possible and recorded <sighs> it into the cassette four track. And that was my synth pad because um, it was the next best <laughs> thing. Like this, this noise with the phaser sound yeah, on it yeah. was the next best thing to a synth pad that I could come up with. And um, what I want to say is that... Uh, if there's an obstacle and if there's a limitation you have to get creative and That's true. and this is i think what helped uh my generation uh a lot in our musical upbringing that um not everything was available at all times and these days um i mean you have a full studio and your That's laptop true. and That's true. and you have uh the universal audio plugins you have the Arturia plugins it plays, plugins, it you plays have as a double-edged sword as well to have all Absolutely. these resources Absolutely. you get distracted but then when you narrow it down to one you you master that craft right. right and that that's precisely the the point that i wanted to yeah. get to that um i think uh 
it's important to focus and 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 uh, just like us who maybe could afford one or two analog synthesizers at the time, even if they were um, comparatively cheap, yeah. uh, uh, we had those one or two synthesizers that we use for everything. And and my advice would be to do the same even if you have 20 or yeah. 30 VSTs on your laptop. Like just really, uh, yeah, exclude stuff yeah focus on stuff um maybe maybe you say um for now i'm only using 808 kicks and maybe i try to avoid the open 909 hi hat because mm -hmm. everybody's using it and maybe maybe i could try to use shakers instead of hi hats whenever possible or use noise hi hats with uh, some synth or whatever and and suddenly you start to develop something that could become your own handwriting because um, you make decisions for something and decisions against something else and and I think that's really really important that's nice that's very nice uh, do you think like the let's say a mixing engineer since it's the engineers are usually behind the spotlight and then you have the artists that are in the spotlight do you think like they have more chances to stay focused because they don't have the distractions or the or the like the focus dies even if you're an engineer because there's all these resources um you see me smiling a bit <laughs> already i mean it's that there's so many distractions yeah. anyway like one thing i still don't do i don't have whatsapp on my desktop for That's example good. i just just have it on my phone because it's it's one distraction yeah. less you know yeah. and and i think uh uh i think regardless of whether you're an artist, a producer, sound engineer, whatever. I mean, if as soon as you work in a digital environment, I mean, there's constant uh, stuff trying to grab your attention. That's true. And and um, maybe that's also something why why some some people enjoy making music at night, you know, because nobody's There's calling. Nobody's and, sleeping. And, yeah. And 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 you know, I like to wake up er very early to to work on my on my stuff because it's everyone sleeping, you know. It's uh, it's it's a good way to stay focused. Then everyone starts to wake up. More messages, more notifications on the phone. Everything. Yeah. It's it gets uh, very hectic. It's the reason uh, why. Um, I mean, Keith Richards is one of my musical heroes, and I've read his autobiography probably like three or four times. Yeah. And and, and he wrote that um, the reason he actually started to take heroin. Not that I'm yeah, recommending no. <laughs> this no, no. to anyone, but the reason he started to take heroin is that it helped him to block out the the world from the creative process. Wow! So basically, it's a similar thing. Like you, you create this bubble around yeah. yourself in which you can experiment and be creative, yeah. and and uh, uh, so I don't support the means but i support the concept you know <laughs> yeah. it's it's Nobody it's, said, it's it's so important <laughs> it's it's so important to yeah. like like how can you be creative yeah. when when uh, you're staring at your phone every yeah. 20 seconds yeah. and and uh when when your mind is not not free from some daily routines that you have to do or something like that and and i think this is also the beauty of making music like yeah. for for me this is uh almost like when i'm really getting into production i'm i'm somewhere else you yeah. know it's it's it feels like meditation and time is running and 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 sometimes time is um, fast and time is expensive yes you know? but 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 sometimes sometimes um it's like hours later like Four, five, six hours later, I'm realizing, damn, damn. It's, it's night already, yeah. and I didn't eat, I didn't go to the bathroom, yeah. I didn't think of anything yeah. else. I was just in this zone yeah. doing my stuff, and that that is so, it's fascinating, yeah. and it's also very, very blissful, and and I th and sometimes also, I mean, these these days I can handle that stuff a bit better, but but uh, when I was starting to to really get into production this was more extreme i think and sometimes i was like after a day of working at the studio i i was uh, not able to uh sit down with friends in the evening and have a conversation because i felt like a scuba diver <laughs> coming coming You're back to the zone, surface you know? from 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 some, some you want to just get some some oxygen back you know yeah and, and I, I was just completely zoned out and, yeah. and 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 had to just basically come back to the to the surface because yeah. before i was able to to actually have a normal conversation yeah. because in my mind i was in this completely different 
place and and uh, that's a very very beautiful thing to to um i think it's it's like meditation or something that's true and, do you meditate and, or you, i don't i mean music music, music yes, is meditation yes. you know yeah, sometimes yeah. i feel like um i'm stressed i'm anxious i'm like something has been missing i put some music regardless whether it's uplifting or it's or it's slow I'm like damn And the thing that music does, it's uh, it's incredible. It just changes your mood right away. It's, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I don't I don't want to go too much into yeah. the details of that, but yeah. but I actually had uh, in terms of my my family and private life and stuff like that, I had a pretty rough time in my early twenties, and okay. um, I think music was really saved the you. thing that 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 saved me and got yeah. me through that. And and um, my point here is if you can't manage to put your phone away and and can't manage to block yourself off from all these distractions you never get the chance to experience this this state of mind and that's you a have shame. to be that one percent that right. stands out you know right. you can't be from that 99 that's true it's uh, it's so nice um uh thank you for <laughs> that extended uh this like outlook on that it's very interesting um Jumping back a bit to to your music, if you had to choose one artist you would collaborate with uh, on on your next EP, who's that artist and why? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, um, let's say let's say it's your last EP. You're gonna <laughs> retire after that, and you have that one chance. Oh, and you that, that, take that, it. that's even more pressure. On me now. <laughs> um, well, I have to say, I'm. I'm very fortunate that I've been able to to work with uh, quite a few heroes of mine in my career and and people I've been looking up to in the 90s and uh, yeah at the time if you if you had told little Hannes about him yeah working with those people yeah, later in his he career wouldn't believe yeah, it. <laughs> I wouldn't have believed it yeah uh so that said for example asla Rukka, with whom i collaborated on poem for the planet uh i've been loving what she's doing since the mid 90s and wow. and it was a bucket list thing for me to at some point to collaborate and and a similar thing would be rasheen murphy the former Moloko singer and wow. and um because i just i love Moloko and i love her voice and her whole style and everything and and i think it would be dream for me to write a song together with her that's nice that's so nice um and speaking of eps and music uh, uh first of all congrats on launching your new label electrons uh what made you start it and uh what direction will you be taking with electrons well thank you first of all and and basically um It's been in the making for a while, like since last summer, maybe. Um, before that, I had a bit of a creative uh, struggle, I would say. Uh, in the pandemic, I wasn't so creative at all. I, <laughs> I had to build, uh, I had to move my studio and build okay. a new studio in 2020. And, wow, and that must have been... That, that yeah. uh, was a big uh, undertaking. And yeah. then also, um, yeah, just... Uh, trying to to keep the whole thing afloat and 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 uh, get settled in the new studio and and um yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't so easy like like it, it was not like me sitting around and and twiddling my thumbs and not knowing what to do it was quite the opposite actually and coming out of that i was touring a lot and so then i didn't really have time to make so much music and also um uh there was a bit of a struggle with me i couldn't really figure out whether i wanted to maybe go a little bit more harder and and in more techno direction um releasing music on on uh awesome Soundwave, carl cox and christopher coast label and playing so much with these guys who are all like harder and faster than me basically yeah. so so i felt a certain pull towards that direction maybe but then at the same time naturally i'm coming more from the melodic side of things and so i struggled a bit to figure out what to do which i did last year and i think last year i i i was very productive and um maybe made some of the best tracks in my 
career actually and some of them like like the one that uh black hole that i just announced for release yesterday actually. i heard it um, did a lot uh, it made it went viral on social media yeah yeah i posted yeah. i posted a snippet and it went super viral like That's like amazing. um there was I don't know, 25 million views on, wow. on, on the clips and, and people were really crazy about it in a way like I have, I mean, I had a little bit of a similar buzz with a million souls in 2019, but not as much. And, and then uh, what happened is that, uh, uh, I had the feeling, wow, this is really happening. Um, It's a great track that uh, somehow managed to 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 write, and uh, people are responding to it like crazy. Uh, but I struggled to find a label for it. I offered it to three, four labels, and um, they basically all said, "Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic track, but it doesn't really fit into what we're doing." Mm. And uh, for me, uh, this was um, yeah, in a way, it was frustrating because I had the feeling, okay, I want to get this out and I want to get going. And uh, at the same time, yeah, I didn't really know how to do it. And I also realized that the industry has changed so much. So much. With the um, past year and a half. With uh, most of the newer emerging labels, uh, they are much more branded than yep. the older ones. And like if you, if you think of um, Poker Flat, where I've released a lot, or Bedrock, where I've released a lot. Simple. I mean, They're simple. Yeah, and, and mm. I mean, Steve and, and John, they are both um, music lovers, you know, yeah. and they have a very eclectic taste in a broad range, and their labels um, have never been narrowed down to, like, one small focus of this is what we do. So, I mean, there, there always has been a range yeah. of of stuff, and uh, whenever they liked something, they, they, they got behind it. Yeah. And, and the newer labels are just apparently not functioning like this They're anymore narrowing. and and for yeah. me who's also sort of like an eclectic artist i mean uh i a while ago i released a fairly technoish ep on tronic and uh, a little bit earlier very uh, smooth deep house ep on poker flat you know i mean this this is probably a bit too i love that it's not the norm that everyone's following now and i always like when we launched the label of toka they were saying so what music direction are you going to follow i'm like we're going to follow the music that we love within the electronic music right space obviously we're going to have like some preferences for some genres but we want to push the envelope we want to push whatever we like but then we start so say, well, won't, you, won't you have like an identity crisis of what is this sound or no i'm like i mean it's music that we like and if it deserves to be out there we're going to push it for it to be out there Isn't that the same motto that you're going to be following? Very much so, very much yeah. so. And I think um, it's not going to be uh, random because yeah. there's still like me Obviously. behind or you Obviously. behind. And, and, and of course, uh, you have a taste yeah. and you have an understanding of what you like and what you don't like. So, so there will be some consistency. It's, it's just not a laser sharp, yeah. uh, cut out, uh, narrow path. It's, it's more of a journey, maybe. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and so I, at some point I realized, okay, I have this great music in my hands and I struggle to, 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 uh, release it. And, and then I realized, okay, I never want to be in a situation like that again, that I'm creating something that goes viral yeah. in this, um, uh, enormity. And then I, don't have an avenue to, to release yeah. it. So I, I have to make my own label now. And and because I wanted the freedom to basically release what I want uh, whenever I want. And this this was the driving thing. And also, I mean, I've been in this game long enough to to basically... I mean, I, I don't have a management. I'm my own management, for wow, example. Wow, really? And yes, because I've, I've got... Respect, man, really. I, I love that. Thank you, but yeah. um, you know, it's it's a product of of me Gets having hectic. having been <laughs> having been a musician, a producer, yeah. mixing engineer, yeah. mastering engineer. Um, I even worked as a as a music journalist mm. uh, on the side for for a couple of years. Um, Where do you work? Um, I I wrote for Sound and Sound magazine, okay. for example, and stuff like that. And uh, so uh, I've been wearing all these hats in my career, and I I. Don't You've advertise got a bit this, and of I'm, I'm way too. So you I'm, I'm way, too, I'm way too busy to 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 uh, branch out into something yeah. else. But I think I could probably um, 
be a good manager to other artists also and I'm, I'm being one to myself and so I, I mean I'm would you be interested to manage <laughs> other artists I don't think you have the time well if, if you if you like I said the day only has 24 hours yeah. so if, if if you somehow find find a way to make the 26 80, 84 if, hours okay. I'm, I'm going to make I'll it try happen. I'll try <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know this 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 is this is a struggle but but yeah. what I mean is I'm I'm experienced enough to to know what I want and really understand what I want and and so um basically setting up the label in that sense was easy because mm -hmm. um I knew what to do and I knew what I wanted and it was just a whole lot of work. You put so, the 10,000 hours in every bit so now you've mastered it and you understand how it works and then well, why not? Speaking of that um I probably spent no, more, the definitely more than 45,000 hours <laughs> in the studio of my life. But so, you know, they say there's the 10,000 yeah, yeah. hour rule. You put it, yes. you put into it and it's always going to give back. No, it's, 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 it's uh, been taking a couple of months. I think uh, I started to really work on the label in uh, September, October, like reaching out uh, to a couple of people mm -hmm. and, and figuring out the best way to do this. And, um, now in the past few days um yeah i've rolled it all out and announced everything and it's just exciting because um i'm so happy that you announced it right before the part i mean we we booked all of this very last minute i'm so happy but when i saw your announcement i'm like great spot on perfect timing we're gonna discuss that on the yeah, pod i mean this, this is actually yeah. the the first in-person interview yeah. where i'm talking about all this kind of stuff i'm and, so and glad then, yeah thank you <laughs> it's it's exciting to to finally present it yeah. and um i mean the the good thing about doing it this way probably if if there's anything people think about when they think about me is a sort of like dedication uh to music to the uh process of creation and hopefully also a certain sense of quality yeah. and this is how i decided to to run uh, the label also so so the way um how i set it up now i signed with a great distributor whom i clicked so with, the whole um, the whole ecosystem the of your label is yes, solid exactly you know, you've, exactly you've i found, sure found, a, found a um found a great uh label manager mm -hmm. beth lady who's also um doing uh management for a nice uh group of other boutique labels um i'm working uh with david malone as a graphic artist who, who has Does done bedrock. all the bedrock yep. um artwork um my uh copywriting uh, that's marcus barnes from london who's a mix mag techno editor and who's uh, as a copywriter you finessed everything you know yeah you know yeah. um as much as I set a very high standard for what I'm doing myself, now it has been such a joy to to also uh, yeah try and set a very high standard for for this kind of stuff and and um, you know I decided if if I do this I want to do it properly and 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 the last few days were so great because um, I think people following me knew that. Um, a label was coming because I was sort of like floating mm -hmm. the idea and teasing it and and but no nobody knew the name or anything mm -hmm. and and now getting all this great feedback on the name and on the logo and all this kind of stuff and after feeling okay yeah um, what's the inspiration behind the name electrons um basically uh if you think about it yeah. me being perceived as sort of the analog guy mm -hmm. like i mean electrons is uh i mean they're they're floating through the wires <laughs> of 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 every synth i'm using yeah. you know it's, it's it's sort of like uh if you break it down um, pretty much the the building block mm. of of what I'm doing, and I'm I I also uh, like this idea of electrons um, being electrically charged particles traveling around and and basically transporting information, if you like. And if you think of a label as as a medium uh, to 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 uh, convey information or even emotion through music, I think I think electrons it's it's a great metaphor. Love it. Way. I love so. the name. I love the logo. I'm really excited to see how it's going to turn out. When when is Black Hole coming out? Uh, end of end of March. Perfect. Four right. weeks. From Look now. forward to that. So basically, yeah. What uh, just to briefly go back to that um, 
basically last summer I realized uh, I sort of knew I have to I have to create my own label, but I sort of kept it in the back of my mind because I felt okay um, if I don't have a name for it. There's no point in, in starting to put it all together. But usually in brand building, you know, I've studied about brand building yeah. in my masters. The name comes at the last stage. You need to build your idea, finesse it, and then from that and from your inspiration, you can come to the And there's a process. You know, I always used to struggle because I want to find the name for something first. But I find like, but there's a lot of things I could finish before and then, then I'll find that perfect name. But you started it. From the start, pretty you much the other way around. Yeah. Yes. So, so basically, I I knew okay. Um, I have all this uh, machinery lined up in my mind that I can uh, spring into motion as soon as as I know uh, the re the direction basically. Yeah. And and I had to feeling okay when I when I don't have a proper name for it. Uh, I don't know that exact direction and then I don't want to waste time and resources on, on doing something. And so um, at some point, I don't actually actually remember when, but at some point um, uh, this name popped up in my head. I was I was in my studio doing something yeah. and, and thinking about something. And then then suddenly the name was in my head and then um, I, I thought about it for a brief moment, and then was like, "Okay, oh, yeah, this this is it. Now now we can now we can make a move." And yeah. I already knew that I wanted to ask David to to create yeah. the logo because he also did the Hannes Bieger Live logo. And I mean, um, um, yeah, I've had so many releases on on Bedrock where he did the artwork. I, I think I'm wearing a shirt that he created <laughs> right now. You know, so it's so, so sort of. Um, uh, yeah, he he also did a lot of artwork for Analog for the agency that I'm with. So so um, and I appreciate what he's doing a lot, and I knew that and we would have a great thing. So so the logo was basically the name and the logo was the first things we had, and then um, the rest uh yeah started to build around that in a way, and yeah here we are. Amazing, amazing! What a story. Um, there's a lot of aspiring artists in the region here. A lot of talent, hidden talent. Um, what does it take for them to get signed on Electrons? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, to extend it a bit, um, it will take something for any artist regarding from, from anywhere to, to get signed, uh, mainly also because for now, um, the only artist on my label will be me. You know, I, I will it's open a platform this. for the music that you couldn't release previously. Yes, yeah. I mean you don't you don't create the structure to not yeah. uh, use it. be able to use it. Yeah. But um, the first two or three releases will be my own, mm -hmm. and I will space it out a bit to to give everything time to breathe. So um, I think for now we are pretty much on a like six week release schedule maybe this will be four weeks further down the road but for now i i don't feel like rushing it i want to grow this organically and that means um a track like black hole i think also needs a little bit of time to, to, to breathe develop yeah. and and so i didn't feel like rushing it but but uh later this year i definitely open up the platform to outside artists amazing and, and um yeah, I actually started receiving demos. Uh, when you announced by, the label, the, you no, definitely are going to start. Before, like, like even even like like last summer at some point, maybe it was June or July. Yeah. I I just post a question on my social. It's like like should I should I make and a label? Yes, no. And then you asked yes, about no. the name as well. Uh, yes, yeah, that, post, that was yeah. later. But, but 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 last summer I was like, should I should I make a label? Yes, no. And I got like I don't know how many hundreds <laughs> of of comments and 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 people started to send me demos right away. But uh, that said, I mean, uh, in my capacity as a sound engineer, I've been uh, working with uh, so many great artists from this region in my career. Um, many people from Lebanon, actually, but just recently I've been working with a guy from Kuwait, another guy from Qatar. And, really? Um, who, who did you work with from Lebanon? Um, a bunch of, like, I mean, um, Elias was one of my first mixing clients but okay. this goes many years back elias uh was it elias Merab? yes oh really nice yes. yeah, he's a legend in lebanon yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I, I think we first met in 2013, wow. 14, or something okay, like that. Nice. It's, it's, it's been a while. And then um, just recently, uh, I started working again with uh, Noor Jaba. Okay, nice. Who lives, Heavy tech though, huh? Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. lives in Berlin. Yeah, she lives yeah. in Berlin. We, we did some work together uh, years ago. Mm -hmm. And just recently we worked again. And there's a couple other people from, from Lebanon again. Um, These are two good names, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, pretty so. sure you work for Plani. So you have a lot of names you're trying to... Yeah, no. But speaking of that, um, how would you describe the scene in the region? Because you've played in Beirut, I mean, you've played in Dubai previously. Uh, have you played in other uh, other countries around the Middle East? Yeah, actually, actually, um, since since COVID, the Middle East has been one of my busiest That's regions. Nice. I mean, I played yeah. played in Morocco a couple of times. Nice. It's not actually Middle East, but I think it's North Africa region. Sort of, they all come of, together. Yeah. Sort of. Uh, related mm -hmm. country anyway i mean I, i've been in egypt a couple of times i've been in turkey i've been in jordan egypt is popping right now the, the scene there is growing very much uh, i love i love playing in egypt yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's very wild always like <laughs> um it's it to me to me egypt really feels like a planet yeah. on its own it's sometimes so chaotic and and disorganized and and uh, you love a the bit of time, chaos sometimes yeah but, but at the same time <laughs> the, the the parties always deliver you know yeah. it's, it's 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 sometimes it's a struggle to get there yeah. but when it's on it's on you know and, and i really i really liked it and the enthusiasm of 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 people um starting to really build and consolidate the scene uh, as opposed to uh, living in a place uh, like Berlin that has been oversaturated <laughs> with this kind of music for I don't know how long you so, know so, so long it's it's amazing I really yeah. I really like that and how, how do you compare the region and the scene in the region here and how does it stand like next to Europe because in Europe it's it was the founding like it's where it all built and then you got, you have Beirut, you have Egypt here. Dubai is growing as well. How how do you see it growing in the next five to ten years? It's an interesting question. Yeah. I mean, um, I guess it depends a bit on how this whole industry worldwide will um, develop. And what what I would love to see is is the diversity mm -hmm. and 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 that 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 somehow still um, has its place because um, I think what's happening right now for with the whole melodic techno genre is that it's sort of uh, uh, yeah the, some sort of mainstream formula that that um, has manifested in a way yeah. and this mainstream formula um, is leaning more and more towards something that I would personally call EDM yeah. and and um, that I personally don't like so much yeah. and um, what I would wish is that um, I mean we're talking a very about a very big part of the yeah. world and yeah. a very important part of the world here yeah. and and what I would love to see is um, this part of the world being able to maintain diversity and maintain um, uh, spaces for different kinds yeah. of music and and uh, not becoming too much of a mainstream business and more um, yeah. I mean, I, w I would love to see underground stuff thriving everywhere. It, it's, you know? and I, I believe, I mean, nowadays there's a lot of different initiatives that are happening under, underground, different types of sounds. I could see it. I could see it in, in Saudi. I could see it in Egypt. I could see it in Beirut. I could see it here as well. You know, you, you got some underground parties. Um, but, you know, it, it they work together. You know, I believe like... Once the melodic techno and the, and, the, and the EDM, like before we had EDM blowing right. up and it really helped the underground sound to also grow. You know, there was this documentary that I that I uh, watched on Netflix a couple of years ago. It's called Why We Started. It's the where, where they interviewed Carl Cox and Martin Garrix and Armin and yeah. and uh, Paul Van Dyke and Paul Oakenfold. And they said that like they work together, you know, if it becomes super big and then you always give room for the underground to also push, you know, and it's a, it always there's cycles, you know, right. and and it's it's very interesting. It's 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 I mean, it, first of all, I'm happy to know that 
one of your busiest schedules was in the Middle East. Uh, and hopefully we can keep this and keep growing and always give room to, to uh, new sounds and experiment. I believe there's a lot of potential here. So, yeah. no, it's, it's absolutely exciting. I always, yeah. always enjoy uh, traveling in this part of the world. And, and um, uh, it's just great to see also how um, music is such a unifying factor and, and how you can come from so many yeah. different backgrounds but yeah. then you get together yeah. and it's i think this is this is one of the beautiful things yeah. that, that music and especially electronic music uh, can be doing and and um yeah i also since covid i i played three tours in india for example which that part of the world also goes has hard been, yeah, yeah it's it's been it's been wild and exciting you yeah. know it's it's, it's <laughs> also it's chaotic but um there's so much enthusiasm yeah. and and so much positivity and and um yeah i definitely i definitely enjoy this and um i think between like like the Middle East and North Africa and India combined. I mean, this is. Uh, it's a juggernaut. I, I played. I played yeah. more shows in that part of the world than, than any Europe other. at the same time. That's amazing. Say. So um, I love to, me, to yeah. me, to me, this is this is very exciting and 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 interesting that somehow um, what I'm doing uh, seems to be resonating with this part of the world so much. Amazing. Um, uh, now let's change it up a bit. Use some like some of our favorite 14 facts questions uh first one person you deem to have a coffee with dead um, or alive and why past and present yeah one person and why it's a very good question <laughs> I could I could think of immediately could think of like like a dozen yeah people <laughs> I'd I'd love to uh pick their brains how to <laughs> how to how to decide yeah. how to decide for one but i mean um i always you could pick two let's say you had the chance to pick two well uh, one thing uh i always thought maybe maybe that's sort of like a related thing as i i always thought that if 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 somebody said okay you have one time travel free yeah. go wherever whenever <laughs> you want um I think uh, I would have enjoyed Los Angeles in the in the 1950s. Okay, like this whole Frank Sinatra, Red Pack sort of. Uh, so you want the group thing. of so, people that you so, want to no, sit no. with? So 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 maybe maybe I would say like like uh, bring me back to uh, LA in 1958 and let me have an espresso with Frank Sinatra. I wow, think that, 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 <laughs> that would be, be such that an would interesting be, conversation. That would be interesting to do. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, Personally, I wanted to ask, like I've been the most excited to ask you this question. Also, uh, if you have the if you had the chance to do a film score from any movie from the past or even any upcoming movie, which movie would you choose and why? Um, tough one. I mean, I actually did a little bit of film music in yeah? the beginning of my career, and then um, I decided not to uh, pursue that any further. I think mainly because I had the feeling that there were too many people involved in the creative process yeah. who uh, didn't really, or who shouldn't, who, who shouldn't have a say, yeah. but but who did because of the position and the whole yeah. um, thing, and and so I didn't pursue this any further. But uh, I'm not saying I don't appreciate it mm -hmm. or or. I don't find it interesting. It's just that um, as a as a job, uh, I wouldn't want to. Mm. I wouldn't want to do it. Okay, so you wouldn't be any if if you had the chance to pick one movie, let's say. Or, or do you like to watch movies? What's your favorite movie, let's say? Um, or what type of movie you like? Recently, I'm a bit more into. TV shows, probably. Okay. Um, What's your favorite TV show? I mean, right now, I'm watching um, Yellowstone, okay. which I find fascinating. Uh, I don't know about it. It's it's basically a story uh, like a like a f sort of family okay. saga playing on a ranch in Montana and then oh. the US, <laughs> and so it's sort of a bit a bit like a like a modern yeah 
Western in a way. It's it's nothing that I would like to make music for, <laughs> but but it, it's something that I'm just yeah. watching at the moment. Okay. And um, one of the did you watch Dune? Um, I didn't, but I actually yeah. worked uh, with uh, some of the musicians uh, working really? on that soundtrack. Like like um, it's an incredible Hans Zimmer. Yes. Uh, yes. And the, and the 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 bassist. Uh, playing uh, a lot of stuff on the Dune soundtrack as a bassist I've been working with wow. in another project and and that's absolutely it's fascinating but it's also um, it's also a whole wealth of knowledge and, yeah. and whatnot you have to have to 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 be great at An it experience and watching those guys do what they do um, uh, yeah, I'm not in that place right now. I mean, I would <laughs> yeah. like I would really have to get into yeah. it, but but um I think uh something that I would find interesting to do is like uh, one one film that I really really uh, enjoyed watching is um Solaris by Andrei Tarkovsky. Okay. Which is this um uh it's based on on a novel by this Polish uh, science fiction writer Stanislav Lem mm -hmm. and, and Tarkovsky being the Russian um, uh, director and and it's a very there has been this mm. fairly recent remake with mm -hmm. uh, George Clooney I think okay. which I don't think I watched but um, the original one it's it's like a three four hour film yeah. and and it's what I find so interesting about it is that it's very philosophical in the in the way of it being sort of a science fiction, but but uh, the whole question that that's looming always is like what is humanity and yeah. who are we and what is this all about, you know? And and the film being so long, being quite intense at times, and then um, it's just very very like I haven't watched it I really it should. has yeah. long faces with like strange droney mm. it sounds like a distorted symphony orchestra mm -hmm. it, it's it's an interesting soundtrack okay um but if if you watch it uh, in the cinema you're just sitting there like for for minutes at a time um thinking about what just happened <laughs> and, and so what's what's great about the film is that it's giving so much time to process yeah. all these philosophical questions and I think I would find it interesting to maybe uh, redo soundtrack for that one. That's nice. That's nice. I, mean, I will probably never do it because it would take too much time. <laughs> but but I, I like the thought. And, yeah. and also it's great the way it is. I'm not saying it needs to be fixed or anything. No, but, no, no. It's but, just if you um, had that chance to jump on it's, and it's work. It's the type of, of film that I'd be interested in, in working on. Nice. Because it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely not edited like a modern Modern movie film. where everything is yeah, going fast, fast and and uh it's 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 more like this associative like mm -hmm. uh philosophical uh thing um and it would be an interesting challenge to to create a song amazing um if you had a superpower what would it be and why maybe well, one, uh, extend time one obvious <laughs> yeah if 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 i could uh have a couple of hours uh, extra <laughs> every day <laughs> that would come in handy um if if i would be a better musician this would also be great yeah i mean um i'm probably not a bad musician but mm -hmm. but um sometimes i'm frustrated um i would love to be able to play but i would mm -hmm. love to be able to be faster to yeah. be what you know it's 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 um just uh just being better at what i'm doing would be lovely nice and and also um i don't know uh, you have a I mean, cheat code, you know. You press be better, pff, become better. You start playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think that that would be great. Nice, nice. Um, who inspired you the most in your career and in your personal life? Well, I think. One musical influence I have to um, mention definitely is um, Adrian Utley, who's okay. one of the original members of Portishead, guitarist, synth player, songwriter, who also 
has had a career as a guitarist before um, creating or co-creating that group. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I think listening to their first album, that had such a profound impact on, like before that this was late 93, early 94, like probably a couple of weeks or months after that album came out. And, and before that, I was interested in rock music. And after this struck me like a lightning, I wasn't interested <laughs> in rock music anymore. Wow. And, and so I think that's, that's really... That's, uh, that's when you transitioned into... into uh... Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, the line is a bit blurry because yeah. um, as a kid, I've been also listening to Pink Floyd a lot because that's, uh, part, that was part yeah. of my father's vinyl record collection. Yeah. And, and I would definitely say that the, the earlier Pink Floyd stuff is electronic music in a way also, wow. the way how they uh, work with the sound in the studio and... And so, I mean, I, I loved the sound of the Minimoog long before I knew what sort of instrument that was, for example. But, but really, um, this switch that got <laughs> flaked in my mind, wow. uh, uh, being blown away from the first Pontesat album, that was just um, uh, was a very, very profound moment in mm -hmm. my musical life. Wow. And, and what about your personal life? Who inspires you the most in that? Uh, I mean, one person I really love is David Attenborough. Okay. And I mean, all these amazing uh, BBC uh, Planet Earth documentaries and like wow. uh, yeah. him being in his 90s and still yeah. traveling the globe to, to be enthusiastic about uh, some... Uh, species on this planet somewhere, and 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 I think the way how is how he's been uh, doing this for six decades, uh, basically being fascinated about wildlife, about the planet, about how to preserve it. Um, you love nature. I absolutely love nature. Amazing yes. man, yes. amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm scuba diving myself also, yeah. and I love all things ocean, and and I love nature, and I love I'm seeing amazing animals in the wow. wild and stuff like that, and and um, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely definitely a person I look up to. Wow, it's um, it's nice um, to know like. The difference between who inspires you in your personal and who inspired you in, in your musical life it all comes from the background of creativity and how to preserve and how to push the envelope. Um, we, we don't have much time left. Obviously, we, we could go for another hour. Uh, but to end things, um, can you tell us more about your plans and releases for 2024 and uh, what would you like to announce, if there's anything you'd like to announce? And yeah. Sure, absolutely. I mean, the the big announcement uh, has just been happening yeah. over the past three days, basically. And so um, what I'll be doing for the rest of the year is is getting this thing off the Go ground on. in the best yeah. way possible. And the first thing now, obviously, is um, being able to finally release Black Hole, which, um, yeah, I started to work on last June probably and then I put the snippet out and, and then this whole craziness started so that's going to be super exciting for me to, to watch this unfold now and, and see uh, people's reactions on, on uh, them listening to the whole song for the first time and not just a brief snippet and then also um, I've got another release lined up on the label with the uh, um, fantastic singer from India whom I collaborated with on that one so that one's coming and I will probably do an album at some point nice uh, can't say any details yet and where and when and how and everything but it's on my mind and it's in the works and um, yeah I will also um, get into the process of, of signing other artists to other towards the end of the year, right? Well, I'm I'm talking to a couple of people okay. already whom I would love to see there, and it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be an exciting extension of of what I'm doing, and then um, uh, 
what I would be really loving to get into at some point, obviously, is doing doing label showcases with this uh, sort of tribe of artists I'm, I'm uh, assembling and um, can't say when this is happening, but um, uh, when the time comes, I'm sure it will happen. And um, yeah, really, really looking Amazing, forward to man. It. Amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a really big pleasure to have you here. We, as I said, we could have went for another hour, but sadly we have just an hour with the schedules that we have. Um, so for everyone listening and watching, uh, if you like this podcast, please give it a like, a comment and subscribe. And where could people follow you as well? Well, everywhere, basically. I mean, I'm, I'm present on all social channels with my own name. So, so I think who wants to find me will find me. <laughs> Amazing, man. Thank you so yeah, much. Thanks to you guys. Cheers.